what I'd like to do is create a city government that's as uh, beautiful as the city that San Diego has become. And we're not going to stop until we get that. I'm San Diego City Council Member Carl DeMaio, and uh, about a year ago I lost my sanity and decided to take the oath of office. Uh, prior to that I was a uh, businessman and a government watchdog. My district was ravaged by fires, catastrophic fires, twice uh, in a four-year period. And so um, when I ran, the labor unions uh, chose to run a firefighter against me, a former fire chief. All of the things being equal, I probably shouldn't have won the seat that I occupy. Uh, but I walked door to door. I personally walked 15,873 homes. Uh, we reached each door at least twice. And when Election Day came, I won by the widest margin of ev any non-incumbent in, in a council race. I carried 87% uh, of Republicans, 78% of Independents, and I'm most proud of this, I carried 54% of Democrats. So I, I pointed out not only the labor costs that the city had to reform, but also some of the corporate welfare. The fact that the general fund is on the hook for paying for a, a baseball stadium right now. We have a convention center, $14.5 million subsidy from the general fund. Uh, again, I, I love tourism in San Diego. It's the gift that keeps on giving. But that gift also gives to the hoteliers and the redevelopment areas. And so we need uh, the industry, the hotel industry. We also need the redevelopment fund to step forward and assume the debt service for the convention center. I've always said San Diego's problems have been caused by big business and big labor. Getting together and deciding, hey, instead of fighting over the pie, Let's just cook the books and both get a pie out of this. I would argue that the city of San Diego has many of the attributes of an insolvent government. Not able to make ends meet uh, using current revenues, uh, y kicking the can down the road, restructuring, using accounting gimmicks, uh, borrowing to make ends meet, uh, not booking full liabilities, not paying for the full liabilities in the year in which they're accrued allowing your capital assets to fall into disrepair, using your remaining assets to uh, borrow more without a public vote, all the attributes of an institution that does not have fiscal uh, health. Uh, they've had uh, a, a culture develop at City Hall that uh, doesn't treat residents as customers and shareholders, but rather as a nuisance, if you will. Uh, they have a culture at City Hall that uh, we shouldn't promote small businesses that small businesses basically are ATM machines. Go hit them up for a higher tax or a higher fee. Don't mention the fact that 80% 80, 80 of our roads are deemed in unacceptable condition. Forget the fact that we have a billion dollars in deferred maintenance debt at least, if not more. Um, forget the fact that we're raising taxes and fees. Forget the fact that services are, are at the lowest level we've ever seen. By golly, we need a brand new million square foot, half a billion dollar City Hall. Oh, by the way, did I mention we're in the biggest commercial real estate bubble that we've ever seen? It's completely crashed. We have 24% vacancy in downtown commercial real estate. And yet, city government's about to add a million square feet of additional inventory. This is almost like um, the captain of the Titanic uh, announcing a dinner party as the ship is going down. The city's operating deficit um, has a number of angles to it. Uh, the city has rated its infrastructure accounts, so there's a deferred maintenance deficit. Uh, even if it's not uh, on the balance sheet, uh, if you let your streets, your sidewalks, your public facilities fall into disrepair because you're not providing for the basic uh, maintenance, the annual operations and maintenance costs, uh, you will have a capital liability grow. Our deferred maintenance deficit debt right now is uh, $1 billion. Second, we face a pension deficit a debt of uh, $2 billion in climbing, uh, primarily driven by unsustainable benefits. Third, we face a $1.4 billion debt for retiree health care. Uh, city employees are promised uh, f free taxpayer-funded health care from the time they retire until they drop dead. They're able to enter a, a, a unique pension program called Deferred Retirement Option Plan, DROP, where for the past five, the last five years of their government service, they're able to draw their salary and draw their full pension. And that full pension is deposited in a risk-free, interest-bearing account that when I took office was guaranteeing an interest rate of seven and three quarters. 
You thought Wall Street bailouts were bad. In San Diego, last year taxpayers bailed out the retirement system for all the market losses, nearly a billion dollars in market losses, and then had to add insult to injury, had to add uh, the 8 percent interest to all those accounts, $330 million, by the way, in drop accounts sitting in the city of San Diego retirement system. My strategy for the pension is uh, uh, threefold. Number one, to renegotiate all discretionary benefits. Second, uh, start Im increasing employee contributions. Now, sharing in the cost in a more equal way saves taxpayers money, but it sets the stage for the third reform that we need to put in place, which is we need to infuse choice into our pension system. Ever heard of a corporate buyout program in the private sector? Do all employees take the buyout? No. Some employees say, no, I'm, I'm perfectly fine continuing to get you know, the, the lavish benefits. Uh, I know that I'm going to get less salary or have to contribute more, but I'm close to retirement. I'm going to stay in the system. New hires may be vested from a legal standpoint. They're vested, but they're only two, three, four years into their service. They aren't here yet for 30 years. They face the prospect of higher contributions for the next 26, 25 years they have an economic incentive to take the buyout. It's modeled after an initiative I, I uh, qualified and, and got passed in 2006 that said the city could outsource. This measure, because the city council has sat on its hands, that voter approved mandate, 60%, uh, they've sat on their hands not one job, not one function in city government has been put out for competitive bid. So this measure is simple. It says, number one, you shall regularly compete city services. It requires that when you do a competition and you open the, the envelopes and compare the bids, that it be done on a level playing field. No poison pills to limit competition. No adjustment of bids to give preferences to labor unions, for example. And finally, it requires transparency that all city contracts should be posted online. I'm not interested in just outsourcing. I, in fact, I could care less if we even outsource one job. What I am interested in is forcing city employees to compete, to justify their labor costs. Uh, in the police department, uh, when I was shining a light on the city's budget uh, through our San Diego Citizens Budget Project, we did some cost comparisons, cost calculations. Uh, taken as a, a function of the police department budget, auto maintenance is the third largest function. $12.5 million back in 2005. Cost per vehicle for auto maintenance. This doesn't include the vehicle. It doesn't include the cost of gas in the tank. It's just rotate the tires, fix whatever breaks during the year. Cost per vehicle, $8,848 per year. Now you tell me, do, do you have $8,848 per year in personal auto maintenance costs? I didn't think so. And I don't think most taxpayers would find that acceptable. Uh, the county of San Diego uh, successfully uh, outsourced its landfill operation and, and trash collection, saving millions of dollars for county taxpayers. Yet, in the city of San Diego, we still do landfill and trash collection using government workers. And by the way, those government employees earn $8 more net per hour than the best labor union contract negotiated by the Teamsters for private trash haulers. And the Teamsters are pretty darn good negotiators. Because uh, we've been dubbed Enron by the sea, because of the securities fraud that occurred, because of the large uh, deficit in the pension system, San Diego has attracted a lot of attention. So if we're able somehow to reform our way out of that bad situation, then perhaps we become a poster child of success and we might see cities and counties across the country emulate our recovery. That would be exciting for me as someone who not only loves San Diego, but is truly interested in seeing us reinvent and redesign government at all levels throughout the country. Down to the black and sea. Star curiosity.